up traders what up investors ken here from dyslexic investor and thank you for tuning in for another fantastic video what are we going to be looking at today we're going to be looking at gme gme of course if you haven't heard about it if you've been underneath the rock or you've been in a coma or you flew it out of space uh via a netflix stock that's in a space etf via arc but anyways we're not going down the wrong path summary we're basically going to be looking at gme looking at the chart some interesting news coming out that they're hiring uh mike from amazon i guess he has a wonderful uh, career path that he's helped uh market uh franchise and more or less grow uh, uh the consumer base via his marketing and just his project management on the sense of uh, growing a community or a product that uh, we'll dive into that and of course some other key hires actually from chewy that are joining gme to rework uh, some of the game informer and then of course their rewards program and see on how that grows but first and foremost jim jim again like that, take it away I it. some people knew some people didn't but did people know about gamestop going from i don't know 30 to 400 by the way gamestop i gotta hand it to them there they're hiring these really unbelievable people. I mean, if they're going to do something, I have to admit they have the team. They hire people from Amazon. They hire people from Google. They're hiring top-notch people. Maybe they have a plan or you wouldn't go. So I'm a little more optimistic about GameStop. I'm a little more optimistic about the banks, too, because of the, the way interest rates are, are going. And some of these... So, yeah. Inciting, right? Super exciting. So looking at this, of course... The press release from GameStop itself. Again, they're saying, hey, GameStop appoints chief growth officer. So this is the Mike guy that we told you from Amazon. Um, so his e-commerce is gonna be really uh, the consumer driven side of GameStop, of course. Uh, GameStop has multiple still game store locations, um, but then also a smorgasbord of online presence, of course. With the e-commerce experience via GameStop, he joins from Amazon where he spent the past seven years holding a variety of senior roles across the segments as Amazon Fresh, Prime Pantry, and worldwide private brands, which I'm not sure what that third one means, but that's whatever. Uh, he began his career at Procter & Gamble and he spent most of his decade in brand manager and marketing roles to increase uh, responsibility and just increase uh, uh, attention to the various products. At GameStop, he will oversee growth strategy and marketing with a focusing of increasing loyalty and the growing reach of Power Up Rewards and Game Informer. So what is Power Up Rewards? Power Up Rewards is basically, it's not like your silly trade-in stuff anymore. It's more or less like uh, club members. Again, you pay a, a fee for this and you, you're able to get a various discount on games, early access to things, and other fantastic stuff uh, via these reward programs. At the same time, the Game Informer uh, is was, I remember reading Game Informer many, many, many years ago, it was with a magazine, if I, if I recall right, um, but it's like a, a, it's a site where uh, drives the focusing of video games, uh, mostly new content on video games, reviews on video games, and just highlighting new games and other features that uh, uh, via consoles and other various uh, products that has to do around gaming. So like gaming keyboards, gaming mice, the best headsets, all kind of things. And it's just like a, if you're in gaming, you're probably going to be looking at this kind of site. Of course, this is kind of just making that vertical integration, which again, um, this is it's super important if a company, if you want to own a SKU or the large segment of the company or the of a of a, a part of the market, you have to uh, vertical integrate again. What what is vertical integrating? We got to go all the way back to uh, the the old uh, steel days and other things like that. In the sense of, you know, who I'm talking about. Yes, so going into what is this vertical integration? It's more or less just like trying to own the whole skew and cutting out middlemen, middle women, uh, and just kind of breaking it up. Of course, this is very common, especially it's somewhat some more simplistic in the sense of, again, if you remember back in the early 20th century, like in here, we had the telecommunication and the computing stage where we had Bell system, which was integrated across telephones, telephone cables, and the whole telephone exchange equipment supply chain. They just owned everything. So they can 
put in different prices at it currently you're really seeing that with with apple um making their own processors really owning their own ecosystem uh they're trying to own every single step of the way so they can kind of keep a night the control on it control cost uh and, and just really uh, own that system in that sense. Uh, the, the examples go on and on from everything you can kind of go into that. So that's what we're kind of looking at here and trying to understand of like, is GME, even though like we've seen this explosion of, of the price and has really kind of uh, ratcheted higher with GME, this other fantastic news, we have uh, uh, Miss Wolf here. We have uh, Tom over here. As also, we have a VP of brand development and also a VP of merchandising. So, what are they? They're focusing on like they talked about the rewards programs, their power up rewards, and just really uh, stimulating the ecosystem uh, around the merchandising, the gaming experience, the gaming lifestyle. Of course, these are two folks that are both. Uh, they're started the 29th, so they started yesterday. Um, and again. This individual, uh, she has a executive director level of marketing roles as such as uh, Speed Trail Whole Foods. I don't, that's the only one I do know. As a new role, we will help brand drive content, social media strategies, and other digital uh, stuff. Uh, this individual, I believe, yeah, yeah, he was served as Chewy's uh, vice president of merchandising. So these individuals are coming both from Chewy, from the marketing and merchandising. So they're just, they're not like, they haven't done this before. Like again, if you're familiar with Chewy, like that was like a ragtag kind of crew there, and they just made a fantastic thing where everyone told them they could not do it because of Amazon. Like, oh, you're gonna be Amazon. You're gonna be Amazon. They gave them the big finger and said, you know what? We're gonna do it anyways. And of course, Chewy has been uh, their stock has been outperforming. They're growing a uh, pretty high growth rate there as well. So. Can this happen to GME? Is this is GME have the the capital the 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 uh, does it have the capital? Does it have the know with all? Does it have the uh, the the management? Does it have the uh, the runway to potentially try to make this into a thriving business? I'm a very optimistic person, and I sure do hope so. Uh, relating to the stock, the stock again is still in somewhat of a crazy state for me to look at. As of right now, the stock currently trading here around 1245 here, Eastern Standard Time on this beautiful Tuesday on the day, uh, well, there's 31 days and is it 31 days? Yeah, 31 days. So the day uh, before the end of the month of March. As of we're speaking here, we talk about that 175 range being some potential support coming in here. So that that's the 21 EMA. But then we also have some stronger support coming in around 157 to 151, which is that 34 EMA, and then also a Fibonacci number at that 23.6 percentile move. So that's going to be my stronger level of support if we do get a, a swing lower here. Uh, as of some of this good news, uh, actually coming out more of yesterday, we've seen it gain boost from it's up five percent today so take that with a grain of salt again uh, i think it's, it's still relatively in this own like dimension of how it trades especially with the amount of uh, options pricing uh the volume and so forth it has been uh fairly insane we're seeing um why is this not loading um the prices here again like that iv is through the roof again uh by iv that implied volatility you can kind of see here in the options contract are substantially skewed highly to the upside. So that's my only concern on this, knowing on how IV works. If that IV does pop, those options will be coming down. But there's continuously volatility in GME, continuously uh, churning, uh, continuously all kinds of uh, um, stuff going on on people talking about certain things, uh, discussing uh, the, the potentially expansion, you're having more content coming out of like, hey, we are actually trying to do something. This is not just a meme stock where I think 80%, 85% of people just like, oh, just because this uh, deep effing value or uh, Michael Burry were talking about it, uh, it just kind of blew up and then it came back down and then doesn't do anything. They're actually taking this opportunity and really showing and giving the finger, like I said, to the people who are naysayers. Like, and me being a contrarian person, I like to bet on things that are like the underdogs. 
Uh, GME is clearly the underdog here, I think, still. I think. I think. As of right now, my brain's telling me it's still an underdog. But until we get more information, we'll figure that out. Um, I I'm still... I don't know. Like, I'm still very much compelled to the story here. I, I do follow it, uh, not extensively as I used to, but I know come a couple of folks within our Discord, you can uh, hit that link down below and join the Discord. Uh, have absolutely like been holding. Like, they've been holding it. Uh, they really truly believe in it, and I and I and I, I give them the the fortitude and Godspeed to uh, to continue what they think is right, um, and just be very careful on their asset allocation and of course that's the the main necessity there um so at those key levels here we're really looking for uh the short-term support around 173 and then basically that 155 to like 150 to even 144 here um we did see a couple strong bounces off that 50 sma so that really strong support coming in around 135 ish that is again that uh, 50 sma line there which we've seen it bounce off pretty aggressively here um, in the short term, we're looking here on a 15 minute chart. It hasn't really been doing much of anything. Let's just let's go into a 20 day chart. Of course, we had earnings kind of did a kapoopsies, but then rebounded pretty aggressively just a couple days after. Um, but having a little bit of an issue getting above that 209 range. Uh, so just a hair above 200, the, the 209, 208 range. We've seen a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit of an issue coming in there. We've, we've seen that uh, at that level here, the couple, uh, the candlesticks kind of fading there, which is again, I, I have to highlight this very aggressively. This doesn't trade like other normal stocks. This is really much and that's like its own little galaxy in the laws of physics, gravity, whatever you want to call it. It is just it's like rubber bandy ish. Like it, there's a lot of stretch, a lot of weight to it. So uh, I'm very careful on how I uh, uh, share my opinions on here because can this run up to 500 again? Sure, maybe. I don't know. Could it run back down to 80 dollars? Sure, I don't know. Um, but uh, optimistically speaking, if GME reports a quarter like last time and, and continuously seeing the growth within the video game segment and just really getting, uh, grasping that customer loyalty, because again, you know, with uh, Amazon, they, they bought Twitch for about like 1.1 billion a couple years ago. Um, and they've, they, they've kind of got a niche in that gaming segment as well. So wh why can't uh, GME uh create some kind of subsection within that in the sense of uh grasping the the gaming folks of like okay this is the gaming one-on-one -on -one place like this is where i want to buy my merch for all my gaming stuff this is all the places where i want to uh pre-order my games if I if that's still a thing because again most of the stuff is like direct to download uh, is this is where I want to get my cosmetic stuff like there's so many different things that they can connect into this little jigsaw puzzle of craziness of GME so I, I just want to highlight that as a whole uh, on, on just the extensiveness of the possibilities for GME on on the amount of capital they're potentially are able to get if they do a stock offering um and other various components of just their the just the 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 notoriety they're getting again like i think most people a year ago were like gme oh that's just the little uh place in the mall that just a couple of those nerds go into but now it, it kind of potentially could be turning into uh, a different destination and highlighting uh, a, a, a resurgence of its uh, a brand recognition uh, where it once was so on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so very much for stopping by. If you haven't already, please check out the links down below. We have the Audible link if you're interested on in listening to audiobooks, which I love. Um, I'm listening to the new uh, Market Wizards, really interesting stuff. And as well, we have the Tastyworks account if you're uh, willing or willing. If you're open to have another trading account or switching your trading accounts of $2,000 or more, you have a uh, opportunity to select two or two, uh, 100 free stocks or up to 10 different options. So let's check that down below if you're interested. Again, guys, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.